Okay, good morning. Um, I'm pleased to report that virus activity in Iowa continues to decline. In fact, our statewide average positivity rate is now in single digits, 8.6% over the last 14 days and 6.4% over the last seven. Yesterday, there were 292 Iowans hospitalized due to COVID-19. That is an 80% decrease since our all-time high in mid-November, and it's the first time since September that hospitalizations have dropped below 300. Additionally, 49 new patients were admitted in the last 24 hours, and that's down from a high of 243 in mid-November. 67 patients were in the ICUs, and that's down 90% from record levels during that same time frame. Our long-term care facility outbreaks have dropped to 33 from an all-time high of 166 long-term care outbreaks, and we continue to see that number decline, and we continue to see outbreaks among residents and staff decline as well. Back in November, in the midst of the surge, the projected number of days that total cases would double was just 33 days. Today, it's at 94 days to double our cases. And this is one of those metrics that's best when it's higher, and 94 is as high as it's ever been going all the way back to the start of the pandemic. So we're continuing our recovery in a strong position, and while the pandemic is not over, Iowans have proven again that we can manage it while living our lives responsibly and normally. Over the weekend, the state's updated emergency disaster proclamation went into effect, lifting statewide requirements to ensure social distancing in certain circumstances, limit gatherings, face mask requirements, sports activities, some of those were paused, uh, and hours of operation. And I want to remind Iowans that these requirements were put in place back on the evening of November 16th when I addressed the state about how serious the situation was and I asked for Iowans to help. At that time, COVID-19 cases were surging and our hospitals were being pushed to the brink just as I described a few moments ago. So I announced additional mitigation measures targeted toward activities and environments that would help turn the situation around in hopefully a relatively short time frame. Iowans doubled down and it made all the difference. Over time, COVID cases dropped, hospitalization stabilized, and we began to relax some of the extra mitigation measures. Because as I said from the beginning, they were never intended to be in place permanently. My approach has been consistent from the very beginning of COVID-19. When virus activity increases, we'll dial mitigation efforts up in response, and when it comes back down, we'll adjust accordingly. As I've said for months, and I'll keep continue to say, we must learn to live with COVID-19 and effectively manage it within the course of our everyday lives. For nearly a year, um, you've heard countless times the steps that we can take to protect ourselves and others from the virus. We know what we need to do, and it doesn't require a gov government mandate to do it. Prior to November, Iowa didn't have a mask requirement, but most Iowans wore masks, and I'm confident that they will continue to do so. I also trust that business owners will continue to make decisions about how they operate that are in the best interest of their customers and their employees, just, because, just as they've been doing for months. For example, many restaurants have invested in creative ways to ensure the safety of their patrons and employees, and I don't expect that to change. 